Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Roddy McDowell in Enid Bagnall's National Velvet on the Hallmark Playhouse. Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we give you a story which won its way into the hearts of a large public just as sensationally as one of its chief characters won a different kind of contest. It is National Velvet by Enid Bagnold, a very fine English writer, and the word national in the title refers to the Grand National, one of the great horse races of the world, which is held every year at Aintree near Liverpool. It's so long since I saw the Grand National myself that I can't even remember the name of the horse that won that year but I do remember the excitement and the color of the occasion. And these, I think, Miss Bagnold admirably captures in her story. She also combines it with a truly delightful hero and heroine. And for these exacting roles, we are happy to bring you together a veteran among Hollywood's most popular young stars, Roddy McDowell, and Miss Anne Whitfield, whose charming talents Hollywood is now busy discovering. And now, before we begin National Velvet, here is Frank Goss, who has a few words about Hallmark. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. Hallmark cards have a magic carpet quality about them. They take you visiting, however great the distance, to help celebrate a birthday, an anniversary, or just any day when you're thinking of someone. There is a quality about Hallmark cards that whispers good taste. And you'll send them with pride, for that identifying Hallmark on the back adds meaning. It says, you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Enid Bagnall's National Velvet, starring Roddy McDowell. Supper was over, and the dishes were washed and put away. Upstairs, the three girls, Meredith, Edwina, and Velvet, lay dreaming their own individual dreams. Outside, the hired boy, Mai, leaned against the barn door, studying the sky. In the living room, Mr. Brown sat scowling at his paper, and Mrs. Brown gazed speculatively at her darning. Great things were just over the horizon for all of them. Just beyond the curve of a hill, where a great horse clattered wildly down a roadway towards them. But they had no way of knowing that, yet. That Mai is a good worker, isn't he? He'll do. His father was a good worker, too. When I was getting ready to swim the channel, he was working right alongside of me. Day or night, he was there if I needed him. Seemed to have an instinct when my knees were going to hollow out. He'd be pounding at the front door. And when I'd open it, he'd say... Araminty Potter, you can do it. And I did. Everybody knows you did it. Everybody needs a touch of glory somewhere in their lives. I'm glad it came to me when I was young. Are the girls asleep? They should be. The girls are growing up. Mm, most girls do. There's a boy in the village Edwina's taken a fancy to. Mm. Seems like a nice boy. Meredith's too young for boys yet. But Velvet? What about Velvet. Velvet's different from the other children. But she'll have a suit or two in time. And it should be nothing less than a prince himself for Velvet. A prince? What kind of talk is that? A prince for the daughter of a village butcher? Velvet should have a prince. Mama! Mama, listen. Mama, these piebald horses loose again. Velvet, go back to bed. I want to see him go by. Oh, look at him. Hello there. How are you? Oh, look at him run. He's like something out of a fairy tale. He's like a prince, Mother. He's like a prince. Wait 
a minute, Velvet. Where are you going? Oh, hello, Mike. I thought I'd walk up to the meadow and look at the pie bulb. Edwina told me they had them up there this afternoon. I'll walk along with you. Your ma's out, and your father said he didn't need me for a while. A fellow in the village told me today that the pie bulb jumped a five-bar gate with a wire on the top. Sailed right over. Five foot and a wire. That's a wonderful jump. He can't bear to be shut up. Farmer E said that he was through chasing him across the country. He, uh, he's going to put him up to raffle. He's going to raffle him? Anybody could get him. Anybody with a shilling. Uh, I've got five shillings I'll loan you, Velvet. You can take a chance for everyone in the family. The raffle's tomorrow. Oh, my, I'll pay you back. I'll win a race with him. I'll pay you back. Oh, my, there he is. Look at him, my, look at him. Oh, he stands marvelous. Look at his bone. Looks more than 15 hands. My, he's coming over to us. going right for it. Oh, he can never go over that. Mari, stop him, stop him. Nobody could stop him now. There he goes. Blimey. Why, a, a horse like that could win the national. Could he, Mari? Could he really? I'll say he could. He's got heart. And that was a grand takeoff. And then when he's up in the air, he, he gives it a kind of a second hitch and his feet tuck up. So he's, he's only a body without legs. Did you see him look before he took off? See his ears flitch forward and then back again? Oh, why, you don't have to teach him. All you have to do is sit on him. If I won that pie bolt, I might ride him in the Grand National myself. Girls can't ride in that. If I cut off my hair, who would know I was a girl? Oh, my, I'd ride him right into history. That's where he belongs in history. <laughs> well, you had better win your horse first. <laughs> Let's go get the tickets right away. <laughs> Kind enough to reach in and get a ticket. That's right. Any ticket at all. Thank you. The winning number. The winning number is 119. 119. I've got it. 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 Let me through with my ticket. With my ticket. of a horse. Please, could you send me the rules for entering the Grand National Race? I am, sirs, your obedient servant, B. Brown. We'd better talk low now, Velvet. If your father comes in, uh, start talking about a new dress or something. The piebald's getting better every day, isn't he? I hope the tendrils don't find out we've been using their jumps. Do you know what you jumped today when I put those logs ahead of the pit? No. You jumped the third on the national. The third jumps a, a ditch and a fence, the same as this one. I, I wrote to a chap today that works up there for the measurements. Now, if you're going to run in the national, you, you've got to be ready for it. Now, here's the clearance for the race. and You signed this James Tasky. Uh, right here, see? Who's James Tasky? It, he's you, the piebald's jockey. The piebald... Uh, sign what I say. That's right. Now, we'll post this, and then, then we'll get the license, see? The, the real Mr. Tasky's not even in England. He, he left for the continent last week, and he, he gave me permission to use his name. Well, we've put our backs in this now, and our shirts and all. What is it you always say, Velvet, uh, uh, about that horse? Uh, putting it in, in what? Putting the piebald in history. Oh. Well, you're putting the piebald in history, all right. And I'm putting you in history, see? Like my old dad did for your mother. It's a... It, it's a foreseen thing. Like God might have thought of. What are you two children up to? You better tell your mother, Velvet. Now's your minute. Piebald's fit to run in the National. What about it? Thought of running it. You did? 
The Grand National with those jumps? Mm, 30 jumps. Stiff. What will it cost? A hundred pounds to enter, and money for a horse box, and a night's lodging. Can the horse win my... Shouldn't wonder. I still have my prize money. It's in gold. Gold sovereigns. You can pay the entry in the sovereign. It might be lucky. Oh, mother. Mother. Everybody's entitled to a chance at glory. I had mine. You and the pie ball shall have yours, Velvet. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of National Velvet, starring Roddy McDowell. Remember last year you resolved this year you'd get your Christmas cards early. Well, it's time to start thinking about them now. Christmas will mean more to you if you start planning early in time to choose your cards thoughtfully. For it is part of the magic of Christmas that the more you think of others, the deeper your own joy. And I suggest Hallmark cards because they are the kind your friends will display proudly during the holidays and treasure long afterwards. They are so extraordinarily beautiful, so individual, and they have such a wonderful way of putting your greetings into words that are just right. You choose Hallmark cards with the pleasant knowledge that they are correct. Their social preference has become a tradition through the years. Remember, Hallmark cards can be obtained only at leading stores. It's not too early to make out your list now. Then choose Hallmark Christmas cards thoughtfully. Your very choice of a Hallmark card is a compliment, for it says you cared enough to send the very best. And now, here is the second act of National Velvet, starring Roddy McDowell. can I do for you, sir? There's entry money in that bag for the Grand National. To what horse does this refer? It's a piebald ho- horse. Property of Miss Velvet Brown. Who is the trainer? Privately trained by the owner, sir. I'll fill out the forms. Mother, you've got to pretend I'm not your child. Why, Velvet? You were 19 when you swam the channel. My chances come earlier than yours. You mustn't think of me as your child. I'm a girl with a... with a chance. Yes? Mai's in the street waiting. We're in this together. We think... He thinks... I think I can ride the horse. Velvet, I... I don't know what to say to you. I've got to ride him. He rides well for me. He's not used to anyone else. He's a great horse, Mother. He's like a... a Bible horse. And he and I... Mother, when we're riding together, we have one heart. Well, how will you manage? You're a girl. They don't allow Ma girls and to... I will leave in the boxcar with a horse tomorrow. As soon as we get away from here, Ma's going to cut my hair like a boy's. He has a suit of clothes for me. And his sister made me the silks to ride in. We have it all planned. Mother, the piebald's going to win... He's going to win the Grand National. Oh, pouring out. Good thing I left you here at the hotel. Did you take a nap like I told you? I couldn't sleep, my I'm too excited. Will the race be postponed because of the rain? Oh, no. You haven't talked to anyone, have you? No, my. Remember now, you're a foreigner named James Tasky. You can't speak a word of English. I remember. All right. First of all, here's a map of the course. Now, we'll take the jumps all round. You start here at the corner. First, you cross a road. Then the first fence, plain fence. You've done just as big at home. There's nothing in them. But don't you despise them. Then comes a rail, ditch, and fence. Then there's two more thorn fences. Then... And there's Beecher's Brook. Beecher's Brook. That's where so many go down. Now, there's no need to fall at Beecher's. I've watched it and I know. Just sit back. Don't jerk his head whatever you do. 
It's a long way down, but he'll land steady. You clear the ditch, you land on the uphill grass and gallop on. Then there's a jump. And... My, I can't remember it all. Oh, put your mind to it, Velvet. You want to make for the middle of the jump at the canal turn. Remember, keep to the middle of the canal turn. Poor Mark. Sound asleep. It's dawn already. Dear God, please help me. Please help me ride the piebald into history. He's a great horse. And that's where he belongs. Please help me. Please help me. Sit in the chair so we can take your weight. Well, why doesn't he sit in the chair? Uh, uh, he, he doesn't understand English. He's from the continent. Well, they weigh jockeys there too, don't they? <laughs> uh, sit down, can't you? Sit. Sit. Uh, that's right. Wait. Ten, six, and eleven. Penny piece. Wait. Ten, six, and eleven. Penny piece. Come on. Come on. Get up. There. Next. Cold, wet day, all right. That mist is right down to the ground. It won't be easy racing. Now, I've got to go for the horse. Keep moving. And remember where you are, and don't answer if anyone speaks to you. I won't. Will you be able to see the race? Not much of it. I'll duck in at the rail a couple of times and and try and get a look at you as you go by. Well, I'll, I'll get the horse and I'll lead you out. And that's all I can do for you. From then on, it... It's up to the piebald and you. The piebald and me. Keep your positions. Keep your positions. objection raised. They want him for the enclosure. Something happened. They want him for the enclosure? That's right. Where have you been all day? This here's the winner. (laughs) Where's the rider? The doctor's looking him over. He fainted almost as soon as he crossed the finish line. The doctor's with him? Here, come on. Now I've got to get this animal back into the enclosure. The doctor's with him? this and get it out on the wire as fast as you can. A girl has won the Grand National. Yes, I said a girl. Get an extra heart. Yes, of course she's disqualified. Tim's chance wins the press, but Tim's chance didn't win the race. Oh, sir, a 14-year-old girl on a portable won the Grand National. Now, gentlemen, 
As you know, the stewards of the National Hunt Committee have been assembled here this morning to consider whether we shall bring criminal proceedings against this girl, Velvet Brown. Is the girl waiting? Here she is. There's a crowd gathered outside in the street now, sickening this whole uproar. Papers have made a heroine of her. Uh, might I say, Mr. Chairman, before the young woman comes into the room, that I think it would be a pity if any note of admiration be acknowledged during the interview, uh, if indeed any is felt. Yes, well, I think you can leave that to me. Uh, will someone please ask her to come in? Yes, I, I will. Come in, Miss Brown. Uh, you, you, uh, Miss Velvet Brown? Yes, sir. Well, I, I, really. Well, uh, was it you all right riding that piebald, Miss Brown? Yes, sir. Uh, what put it into your head, girl, to do a thing like that? Well, I, I knew the horse could do it. Yes, but, but well, why are you riding? Why did you want to ride him yourself? Why not get a professional? Well, he, he goes very well for me. He certainly does. And he certainly did. There's no argument to that. Miss Brown, the committee feels that you attempted to defraud the Grand National in order to win a prize. The prize? It wasn't the prize. I never wanted the prize. You didn't want the prize? No, I wanted the honor. For the horse. You see, he, he jumped so beautifully. And I wanted him to be famous. I didn't even think of the money when I planned it all. Who helped you plan it? No one. Maya and I did it all by ourselves. Oh, that's my tailor you're speaking of. The boy outside? Yes. Yes, we'll ask him to come in, will you? Yes, yes. You come in, Mr. Taylor. Mr. Taylor? Yes, sir? Uh, you work for Mr. Brown? Yes, sir. Hmm. You're the one who engineered this monstrous affair. That's one way of putting it, sir. I, I helped. Uh, what was your share to be of the purse? I didn't want any share of the purse. We, we never even thought about the purse. All we thought about was the horse. Velvet wanted to... to put the horse in history, she said. Oh, she got that out of somewhere, and she kept thinking it and saying it. Why, we didn't either one of us ever talk about the purse. Oh, what is that noise? I say, the streets jam with people as far as you can see up and down. Yeah, well, open the window. Oh, let me look! Well, go ahead and look, gal. It only happens once in a lifetime. Sometimes not that often. Yes, Velvet. Where would you expect? Out with the pie ball. We were lucky the National Hunt Committee decided to drop any idea of prosecution. Yes, I know. Well, I hope she's able to settle down to normal again. She has already. The glory wine is already gone from her glass. She... She was like a child who's offered wine and puts the glass to her lips but doesn't drink. The newspapers applauded her. The public stared. Hands flew out for her. For a few moments, she shone. A wonder, a glory, a miracle child. But now it, it's all gone. And all that's left to her is what she wanted in the beginning. Yes, he is, Velvet. He is beautiful. You're both beautiful. You won the Grand National Pie Ball. I knew you could do it. You won the Grand National. Roddy McDowell and James Hilton will return in a moment. Now, new excitement for children. 
Now there are eight brand new Hallmark Dolls of the Nations, and that makes 36 Hallmark Dolls in all. Children love to collect these beautiful dolls, and you can send them so easily for their greeting cards. Each doll stands up by itself, wears the colorful dress of its native country, and there's a fascinating story about it told inside in rhyme. Children are enchanted to learn about living in houses of ice from the little Eskimo, about riding elephants from the lovely little princess of India, about strange and delightful customs of Australia and Switzerland, Ireland, Hawaii, Sweden, Scotland. Think what adventure and joy and education you give a child when you give these playmates from faraway lands. They are in glowing colors, front and back, with real feather plumes in their hats. And they cost just 25 cents each. For a thrilling gift, get two dolls and a Hallmark collector's album that holds the entire collection for only one dollar. Tomorrow, see Hallmark Dolls of the Nations at the friendly store where you get Hallmark greeting cards. Here again is James Hilton. I'd like to congratulate our two young people, Roddy McDowell and Anne Whitfield, for a very fine and exciting presentation of tonight's story. Well, Mr. Hilton, I enjoyed being Velvet. It was so much fun pretending I was a boy. Pretending is right, Anne, because I consider you my leading lady. Now, Frank? <laughs> right, Roddy. Now's the time. Well, Anne, Hallmark has asked me to give you this collector's album of the Hallmark Dolls of the Nations, complete with all 16 dolls. Thank you so much, Roddy. This is a wonderful gift. I have a collection of Hallmark dolls, and now I'll have all of them. I mail Hallmark dolls to my friends, too, just like birthday cards on the birthdays. I always call on Hallmark, too, when I have a friend's birthday, Frank. Thanks again, Mr. Hilton and Mr. Goss. And will you thank Hallmark for my very nice present? Roddy, is it time to go? Yes, Anne, but, but first, Mr. Hilton, thank you for inviting us over tonight, and what's the show for next week? Next week, Roddy, our show is The Virginian by Owen Wister, starring that popular new star, MacDonald Carey. This is a Western story in the real tradition, with all the action and thrills of a great tale set in that great time of American history which is known as the winning of the West. Why, that sounds great, Mr. Hilton. I'll be listening. Fine. Our director-producer is Bill Gay, our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our script tonight was adapted by Gene Holloway. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> For Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when James Hilton returns to present The Virginian, starring MacDonald Carey. And the week following, Rose Wilder Lane's famous story, Let the Hurricane Roar. The Columbia Broadcasting System. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.